This is a tutorial on how to use a calculator to do inverse trigonometry. Now before I show you how to do that, it is important that you know a few things. First of all, when doing inverse trigonometry, you could potentially have an infinite number of angles for your solution. In order to know which solution or solutions apply to you, you must know the domain of your problem. Or in other words, you need to know the interval that you are working with. In order to gain a better understanding of this concept, please refer to our tutorial on inverse trig functions. Now as for the calculator, it will give us only one solution, which will be the angle measure closest to the unit circle's origin, whether it's positive or negative. Now in order to understand what I mean, let's say that we evaluate an inverse trig expression and get the angle measure of 315 degrees as our solution. Well, rather than giving this as our answer, the calculator will say that the angle measure is negative 45 degrees, which is technically the same angle when you look at the unit circle. But like I said before, the calculator will choose the angle that is closest to the origin. Now in this case, for the angle measure of 315 degrees, you'd have to start at the origin and go all the way around counterclockwise to get to 315 degrees. But rather than doing that, the calculator just takes the short trip to the 315 degree measure by going negative 45 degrees. In this case, making it the shortest angle measure from the origin. So keep that in mind as we take a look at a few examples of inverse trig expressions. The calculator will always give us the angle measure that is closest to our origin. So let's start off with the first example. So here we have the inverse cosine of 1 half. And in order to put that on the calculator, we need to use the inverse trig features above our trig buttons. So in this case, we want to use the blue lettering above our cosine button, which has our label for the inverse cosine. So in order to get to that feature, we need to hit second cosine. From here, we could see that we have the cosine to the negative one, expressing that it's the inverse cosine. Now we just need to put in one half. So one divided by two, and then close the parentheses. Now before hitting enter, you need to make sure that the calculator is in the mode that you want it in. For example, if you want your angle measure to be in degrees, then your mode needs to be in degrees. But if you want a radian measure for your angle, then make sure that the mode is in radians. For us, we're just gonna keep it simple and have it in degree mode. So now we could hit enter. From this, we could see that our solution closest to the origin is 60 degrees. Now let's try the next example. This time we have the inverse tangent of negative one. So in order to get to inverse tangent, we need to hit second tangent. And now we just need to type in negative one and then close the parentheses and hit enter. And when we do that, we could see that our solution closest to the origin is negative 45 degrees. Now let's take a look at one more example. This time we have the inverse cosecant of two. Kind of like with reciprocal trig functions, there is no button for the inverse reciprocal trig functions. So in order to evaluate this expression, we need to rewrite it. Now since the reciprocal of cosecant is sine, we'll need to use the inverse sine. But in order to make it equivalent to doing the inverse secant, we need to take the reciprocal of two. So in order to rewrite this to have the same exact value, we would evaluate the inverse sine of one half. Because sine is the reciprocal of cosecant and one half is the reciprocal of two. So let's put that in our calculator. So we'll hit second sine, giving us the inverse sine. Now we need to put in one half. 
and then hit enter, giving us 30 degrees as our solution closest to the origin. And that's how you evaluate inverse trig expressions using a calculator.